All right, starting with uh, chapter two, two point one, determining the average rate of change. Okay, so the this lesson is pretty uh, simple for today. Uh, we're just doing average rate of change, which is the same as calculating the slope. Okay, so the average rate of change is the change in, in quantity represented by the dependent variable y divided by the corresponding change in quantity represented by the independent variable x. Okay, I think this kind of got mixed up here. So it should be the change in y divided by the change in x, which would be delta y over delta x. Okay, so we're, we're doing um, the change in y divided by the change in x. Okay, which is slope. Okay, so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so that's the average rate of change formula. Key, key word here, um, because we're gonna be doing two different types of rate of change. We're gonna do average rate of change, and then um, on Friday, we'll be doing instantaneous rate of change. So here, average, we have to make sure you pick out the key word, which is average. So average, we're gonna be doing slope. Instantaneous is, there's actually three different formulas, but you have to make sure you, which one you're doing. So average versus instantaneous. So right now, we are doing average. Another way you know it's average is in the question they'll give you multiple values, whereas instantaneous, which we're going to do on Friday, um, you only get one value. Okay. All right. So let's scroll down. there. Um, another name for the average rate of change is the secant line, okay, where the average rate of, uh, is the slope of the secant line. Okay, so a secant line could be look something like this. So say we had, I don't know, some sort of parabola or exponential function. function. So when we do an average rate of change, we take this point and this point and we find the slope. Okay, so this would be called a secant line, secant. So it's the slope between the two points. I don't know if you guys can see that there. Maybe I'll make it a little bit larger. If it's just a straight line, it's just from one point to the next point. So if it's a linear function, your secant line is, on your, uh, is part of your function. But for instance, sometimes you might have something that is curved. So if you're finding the average rate, um, you're going from one point to the next point and you are finding the slope from here to here. Okay, so you're looking at the average rate of change. This line here is called the secant line. All right, number one. Uh, a group of children set up a lemonade stand in a neighborhood. The number of cups of lemonade that they sell are given in the table um, below for the various times during the day. Determine the average rate of change in the number of cups a lemonade is sold for each half hour for the first hour and a half. Okay, so we're gonna do uh, for the first half hour, and then from uh, half hour to one, and then from one to five. Okay, so from the first, from zero to the first half hour, we're gonna do, we're finding the slope or the average rate of change. So we're gonna have y2 minus y1, over x2 minus x1. So in our first one, our y2, remember in, on a graph, your first column or row is always your x values. So it's your x and then the second one is always the y or your f and x. So the first row or column is always your x and the next one is y. So y2, so we have four, subtract y1, which is zero. So four minus zero and then divide by 0 0.5 minus zero. So you get 4 divided by 0 0.5, which gives you 8. Okay, so that would be 8 cups per hour. Okay. Even though we did it first, so it's 4, four in the uh, first half hour, which would be equivalent to 8 in an hour. Okay, so that's the first one. So that's from 0 to 5. So this is from 0 to, from zero to a half, sorry. Now we're going to do from a half to one hour. 
So we have y2 minus y1, so 9 minus 4. So 9, I'm just going to put it in for now. So 9 minus 4, and then we have 1 minus a half. So we have 5 divided by a half, which is 10. Okay, so $10 per hour for lemonade. And now the last one, you can probably see it through there. So the last one from a half, one and a half to one. One to one and a half. So we have 13 minus 9. And then one and a half minus 1. Four over 0.5, which again is eight, um, eight cups per hour. Oh, why did I put dollars here? Sorry, not ten dollars. This is ten cups per hour, and this is eight cups per hour. Okay, so that would be average rate of change. So that would be the first one. Okay, now our last one, determine the rate, the average rate of change for the function. So they give you a equation this time instead of a table of values over the interval of uh, between three and five. So on your sheet, you should be able to see this. So it's from greater than or equal to three, but less than or equal to five. And the equation here is f at x, three x squared. Ooh, I can't read that. I think it's minus four x plus three. Okay, so average rate of change, so we're doing average again, so we're doing our slope. So we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so I'm going to introduce something a little bit different now. So since last year, we no longer use y's. So as I was discussing in class earlier last week, that y is now f at x. So now we're going to replace f at x, or sorry, y with f at x. So we have f at x2 minus f at x1. Over x2 minus x1. So f at x2 minus f at x1 is over x2 minus x1. So what does that mean? Well, in here, this is going to be our x2. This is our domain. This is our, our the range of values for our domain. So the 5 will be your x2, and your 3 will be your x1. Okay, so we're going to do this. So f at x2, so it'll be f at 5, minus f at 3. So f at, at x1, which is 3. So f at 3 all over x2, which is 5, minus x1, which is 3. So again, so I have a y2, y1. It's now f at x2 minus f at x1. And in this case, our x values are 5 and 3, so it's f at 5 minus f at 3. Okay, so to actually get the value here and here, so in order us, for us to find um, the actual value for here, we need to substitute 5 into the equation, right? So this is, what is the y value when our x value is 5? Okay, so over here, we're going to substitute 5 into the equation. You guys can see. So 3 times 5 squared minus 4 times 5 plus 3. So we had 25 times 3 is 75. Subtract 20 plus 3. So 50, 75 minus 20 is 55 plus 3 is 58. So our f at 5 is 58. So f at 5 is 58. And now we do the same thing for f at 3. So for f at 3, we substitute 3a 
same. So 3 times 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 3. So we get 9, 27 minus 12 is 15 plus 3 is 18. So 9, 27 minus 12 is 18. So minus 18. All over 5 minus 3. Okay, now we solve this. So 58 minus 18 is 40. 5 minus 3 is 2. So we divide it and now we get 20. Okay, so the average rate of change for the function over that period of time from x to 3 to 5, that time but over that interval, um, is 20. We don't have any units or any rates, so right now it's just the 20 is the average rate of change. Okay, so again, uh, in the future, to identify whether it's average or instantaneous, well, first of all, if it says average, then use the average formula. But for averages, they also will give you a range of values and or they'll give you a chart. Okay, so that's how we should do it. So homework here, page 76, 1, A, C, and E, 2, 4, 8, and 10. And I'll see you, half of you guys, on Friday. And make sure you print out the notes from 2.2 .2 to 2.4. Okay, take care.